Coming up soon is your Unit 4 exam. This covers the Industrial Revolution and Imperialism, and there'll be also a DBQ on those topics. So this video should consist of one part of how you study and prepare for it. So first up, let's talk a little bit about the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Re Revolution first began in England for many reasons. It had a damp climate, which was good for growing cotton, Remember that textile industries was where the Industrial Revolution began. It had lots of waterways, which was good for steam power to power the factories, but also for transporting goods. They had a large educated workforce that could operate the machines. It had many colonies to get goods from and to ship goods to. It had a stable government, which didn't really set limitations on business. It also had lots of capital, which it could use for investment. And there was also ample resources there, such as coal, to work for steam power. So where should we go next? In order to industrialize, a country needs three things. We sort of remembered it as LLC, land, labor, and capital. It needs land so that it has enough food production first, and also land to industrialize and to gain resources from. You need people to work as laborers, and you need capital to invest for your machines and your businesses. As countries were industrializing, less people were needed on the farms because they were replaced by machines. People left the farms and ended up in the cities, and urbanization grew as the Industrial Revolution took place. The workers lived in these urban areas. Workers faced many problems. Their days were long and repetitive, unlike um, maybe what they were if craftsmanship beforehand. They worked long days, their jobs were dangerous, and for some of these reasons, they started to form labor unions, which grew during this time period as well. Let's move on to, let's see, laissez-faire governments were one way that, or one reason, I should say, that the Industrial Revolution was able to take place. They let businesses run businesses, and the governments didn't really interfere. They put no limit on their work hours for people. There was no minimum wage. There was no child labor laws, and children were often preferred to work because they were small and they could work in the machines and also into the small mines. There was also no environmental or safety laws. All these conditions allowed businesses to thrive. Also, steam power being a big component of the Industrial Revolution, um, two ways this changed transportation was a growth of canals, with, especially with steamships, um, but also with the railroad. This allowed goods to get to more places and in a quicker time. So it increased trade, which decreased costs of many products and made more products available for more people. Okay, so you should also be going over the PowerPoints and the notes on the Industrial Revolution and the previous uh, unit videos on the Industrial Revolution, but this gives you a good overview. And next, we'll move on to imperialism. Now, the second part of our unit was on imperialism and to help us with this will be block A5, right? How did the Industrial Revolution tie into imperialism? What were industrial countries looking for to find? All right, I made a mistake there. So what were they looking for? Workers. Land. Workers, land. And resources. Resources, yeah. good. So the imperialism has a direct, direct connection to the Industrial Revolution, right? Okay. So because of the Industrial Revolution, Countries needed new materials, right? Cotton, other things, and also new markets, so people to sell it to. Um, in order, once they went there, in order to get their goods and things across, they built roads and bridges and infrastructure in the colonies. Um, we focused a lot on Africa. The Berlin Conference. Who wants to give me a rundown of what the Berlin Conference was? Go ahead, Sophia. Europe broke Africa into a bunch of different parts and then took it. <laughs> Pretty much that's it. Was was Africa invited to this conference? No, there was no African nation. Of course they were. No African nation was invited. So when they made boundaries, um, it was basically along the lines of where the European powers wanted them. It was not along um, African culture boundaries or there are different ethnic groups. So that created a lot of problems. And to this day, a lot of their those borders stand true. Um, besides Africa, they were also going to other parts of the world, the Americas, specifically South America, parts of Asia, specifically around India and Southeast Asia, where they did exploit 
um, the resources and the labor of the people there. Some of the effects of imperialism. There's a whole video on just the effects and a PowerPoint on the effects. Native culture often was destroyed. Nothing to do with laser sharks. Um, often their language and their religion uh, was replaced with the imperial countries and other things like that, the way they dressed, all those sorts of things. Something today we're going to work on in class is The White Man's Burden, written by Rudyard Kipling. And the idea was that they were going to help the Native peoples. Um, and that's in a PowerPoint as well, and you should remember that from class. All right. So there we go. Um, any questions on imperialism? Any points you want to make? Imperialism no. is a good thing. No. Wow. But at the same time, it had many negative effects. Right, good and bad. Right. Good you want to say something, bad. Yishui? Okay, good and bad for imperial powers and the colonial powers. All right, tell everyone to study. 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 Next week on Name Not Yo Show. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter. <laughs> is, is that inappropriate? Can I not show that? Plus. Yes. It's appropriate. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, goodbye.